we can take the ratio, and then we can see whether we actually confirm that the time that it takes is proportional to the height, to the square root of the height. So I will make it a little more comfortable for you in the lecture hall. That's all right. We have the setup here. We first do the experiment with the three meters. There you see the three meters. And the time, the moment that I pull this string, the apple will fall, a contact will open, the clock will start. The moment that it hits the floor, the time will stop. I have to stand on that side, otherwise the apple will fall on my hand. That's not the idea. Stand here. You ready? Okay, then I'm ready. Everything set? Make sure that I've zeroed that button. Yes, I have. Okay, three, two, one, zero. 781 milliseconds. So this number, you should write it down because you will need it for your second assignment. 781 milliseconds with an uncertainty of two milliseconds. We're ready for the second one. You ready? You ready? Okay, nothing wrong with being ready. Zero, zero, right? Thank you. Okay, three, two, one, zero. 551 milliseconds. Boy, I'm nervous because I hope that physics works. So I take my calculator and I'm now going to take the ratio T1 over T2. The uncertainty you can find by adding the two here and subtracting the two there. And that will then give you an uncertainty of, um, I think, point oh, mm, point oh 0.08. Yeah, point oh 0.08. You should do that for yourself. Point oh oh 0.008. Dimensionless number, this would be the uncertainty. This is the observation. 781 divided by 551. One point, let me do that once more. 781 divided by 551, 1417. Perfect agreement. Look, the prediction says 1.414, but it could be one point, it could be too higher. That's the uncertainty in my height. I don't know any better. And here, I could even be off by an eight, because that's the uncertainty in my timing. So these two measurements confirm, they are in agreement with each other. You see, uncertainties in measurements are essential. Now, look at our result. We have here a result which is striking. We have demonstrated that the time that it takes for an object to fall is independent of its mass. That is an amazing accomplishment. Our, grand, our great grandfathers must have worried about this and argued about this for more than 300 years. Were they so dumb to overlook this simple dimensional analysis? Inconceivable. Is this dimensional analysis perhaps not? quite kosher? Maybe. Is this dimensional analysis perhaps one that could have been done differently? Yeah. Oh yeah. You could have done it very differently. You could have said the following. You could have said the time for an apple to fall is um, proportional to the height that it falls from to a power alpha. 
very reasonable. We all know the higher it is, the more it will take, the more time it will take. And we could have said, yeah, it's probably proportional to the mass somehow. If the mass is more, it will take a little bit less time. Turns out to be not so, but you could think that. But you could have said, well, let's not take the acceleration of the Earth, but let's take the mass of the Earth itself. Very reasonable, right? I would think if I increase the mass of the Earth, that the apple will fall faster. So now I would put in the mass of the Earth here. And I start my dimensional analysis, and I end up dead in the waters. Because you see, there is no mass here. There is a mass to the power beta here and one to the power gamma. So what you would have found is beta plus gamma equals zero, and that would be end of story. Now you can ask yourself the question, well, is there something wrong with the analysis that we did? Is ours perhaps better than this one? Well, it's a different one. We came to the conclusion that the time that it takes for the apple to fall is independent of the mass. Do we believe that? Yes, we do. On the other hand, there are very prestigious physicists who even nowadays do very fancy experiments and they try to demonstrate that the time for an apple to fall does depend on its mass, even though it probably is only very small if it's true, but they try to prove that. And if any of them succeeds or any one of you succeeds, that's certainly worth a Nobel Prize. So we do believe that it's independent of the mass. However, this, what I did with you, was not a proof, because if you do it this way, you get stuck. On the other hand, I'm quite pleased with the fact that we found that the time is proportional with the square root of h. I think that's very useful. We confirmed that with experiment, and indeed, it came out that way. So it was not a complete waste of time. But when you do a dimensional analysis, you better be careful. I like you to think this over, the comparison between the two, at dinner and maybe at breakfast and maybe even while you are taking a shower, whether it's needed or not. It is important that you digest and appreciate the difference between these two approaches. It will give you an insight in the power and also into the limitations of dimensional analysis. This goes to the very heart of our understanding and appreciation of physics. It's important that you get a feel for this. You're now at MIT. This is the time. Thank you. See you Friday.